able to come and be with you again this morning. All of you may notice that I am a little more, com more comfortably dressed than normal. Uh, that's because I am back in my home, in my office, and uh, I, my surroundings are very familiar. But that's beside the point. The point being that I've come, the Lord willing, and enabling me to share a portion of His Word with you. And I'll be going to the first chapter of the book of Mark in just a moment. But I wanted to make a few comments first of, uh, as to what going on what, or what has been going on before we come to our text, which will begin in verse 40 of Mark chapter 1. So, it, as we come to uh, Mark 1, uh, and before we get to verse 40, we see this is early in the first year of Jesus' earthly ministry. We know that he has been baptized. He has been tempted of the devil. He has started his preaching, which is of repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He has called his first four disciples. <coughs> he has taught in Capernaum with authority. And uh, in verses 23 through 31, Mark tells us that he has healed two people. And then uh, in 32 through 34, we see that many had been healed of various illnesses. And so we're coming up right to, to verse 40. Uh, well, in 39, 39 tells us that Jesus, that in that morning, Jesus and those four disciples began sojourning throughout Galilee, preaching and casting out devils. So again, our text is Mark 1, beginning in verse 40 through 45. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leper departed from him, and he was clean, cleansed. And he straightway charged him, and forthwith, forthwith sent him away, and saith unto him, See, that, see thou saith nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer thy and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and to blaze across the, the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter. We pray with me. Father, as we look at this passage of Scripture, I pray your blessings upon it. Let us see the power of Jesus in it. Let us see, Lord, that he does that which is not expected, that he blesses us in so many ways. Lord, I pray for your blessings this morning, that as I try to share this word, oh Lord, I just pray your blessings upon it, that it might glorify thy name. Now, Father, I pray for thy people, wherever they may be, wherever they are gathered together in thy name. Just be there. Father, I pray for our nation. I pray for our leaders, whatever level they might be on. Father, that, all would, that, that you would turn them back to you. Lord, that we might do those things which are right in their sight, and that men would keep doing those things which are right in their own sight. Let us do right in thy sight, O oh Lord. Now continue to bless us, God, and grant us. Forgive us from the sin, for I ask it in Jesus' name, and amen. I'm not going to go through the list, but it appears this, that this is the seventh major miracle that Jesus has performed. And I mean by major, 
that this was the seventh miracle that is individually listed. Because if we look at Mark, just to kind of explain the difference, if we look at Mark 34, we see many were healed and many devils were cast out. And yes, each of these healings were miracles. But all of these are listed as one major miracle by Mark. And we have to remember that in the closing words of his of of the uh, Gospel of John, Jesus said, the world could not contain the works which should be written, which Jesus did. Now this is the first of two accounts of the healing of lepers. And in them we see, or that we are allowed to see, the Lord's compassion and his power on full display. These are also, they, these are also two of the proof texts that Jesus is the Messiah as we note in Matthew 11, 5, that the Messiah would heal the sick. And, uh, and, and that reads, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed. The death here, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. These are the words that Jesus spoke to those men who were sent by John to say, say, are you the Messiah? Now, you may notice that this is, uh, that my quote is in Matthew, and, and that it, this is actually after Jesus had healed this particular le leper. So it's not really a prophecy. And I, I caught this, and I searched for a passage to specifically tell me that Jesus would be healing leprosy. And to be honest, I did not find one. I may have overlooked it. I've done that before. But I did find several about the deaf and the blind and the lame being healed. Now, these were diseases Jesus would have and did clear, cleanse. And leprosy seems to be, of add, be added here. And it was done for John's assurance that Jesus was the Messiah. He was the one for whom they were looking. But this leper, this leper was a sick man. He was sick with leprosy. Now today, leprosy is known as Hansen's disease, and it's treatable today. But in biblical times, this was an incurable, infectious disease, and it was probably the most feared disease of the day. It was a disease that affected the whole body. It actually started from within. Uh, it would start with pain in the joints, and then spots would appear on the skin as it progressed until the uh, leper's body was basically rotting away. It also attacked the nervous system so badly that a leper might not know he had been injured. And this would lead to another infection beyond leprosy. Um, this may sound a little out of line, but it's, it's a known fact that a leper would not even know with, uh, when the rats were feeding on his body as he slept. That's, that's how numbed he would be. I've also read somewhere that once infected, a leper would expect to live about nine years before dying, a most horrifying death. But while living, the leper, according to the law, was to be totally isolated from everyone not infected. Leviticus 13 and 46 speaks of this, and, and uh, it's recorded there. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, speaking of leprosy, he shall be defiled, he is unclean, he shall dwell alone, without the camp shall his inhabitation be. So in a sense, a leper was basically banned from his family, his home, his friends. He was supposed to remain 50 feet 
from those who were not infected. And if the wind was blowing downwind to, to, from him, he was to be 200 feet from those who were closest from him. He had to wear torn clothes. This would be an indication to those he was coming close to that he was a leper. It was a form of identification. He also had to shout, unclean, whenever anyone came near him. And lepers, well, they could even be stoned to drive them away, and sometimes they were even stoned to death. As we look at this disease, we see it starting again. It started internally, and then it started manifesting itself outwardly. And the outward, it would just show up as a small dot of the skin. But it would grow and it would be, and it became all consuming. Remember after the battle of Jericho, a man named Ech Achim, he had a little bit of inward greed and he acted upon that greed in a way that we would say was small in comparison to the riches of Jericho. But what did that cost him? It cost him not only his life, but it cost him the life of his families as well. David, for a few moments of passion, cost not only the life of Uriah, but also the life of the child of that passion. And that one bite of the fruit that was good to look at caused Adam and Eve and all of their descendants that former that relationship which they had ha formerly had with God. And this is how sin works. This is how leprosy works. It begins with within. In the case of sin, it's temptation. And then sin is acted upon. Leprosy from within shows itself and it needs to be a, and, and, and that's its act and sin and leprosy both have their repercussions those repercussions are not just on the individual but it has repercussions on all who are around us it burns from within it defiles us within and without and sin it separates us from the from the Almighty, and leprosy separates would separate from the fellowship of, of other people. But let's go back to our man with leprosy. He's unclean and he knows it. Yet he approaches Jesus. Did he cry out unclean? It doesn't say. Did those with Jesus shout for the leper, go away, or cast stones to drive him away? Again, it doesn't say. Did any of the disciples try to pull Jesus away from him? We don't know. It's, it, it's, nothing is recorded in the scriptures about this except what was important. Verse 40. And again, reading there. And there came a leper unto him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. This reminds me of the Canaanite woman whose daughter was, was sick, and she came forcing her way through the disciples. And then she came and said, If thou wilt, heal my daughter. She came, and this man came in the same way. This man came, and he humbled himself before Jesus. Why? 
Well, has he heard of Jesus healing other diseases and, and has come to be cured of this incurable disease? Well, at this point, this is the first time that uh, Jesus has healed leprosy. Or it's the first time it's recorded. This man in his heart knows that Jesus can cure him. But will Jesus cure him? To this leper, Jesus is a last resort. In Matthew's and Luke's account of this, uh, this miracle, the man addresses Jesus as Lord. And my question is, why did he call this wandering street preacher, street healer, Lord? Well, something within him told him to do so. And that something is what we call faith. Where did, his, where did he get his faith? There's no other source. To quote Jesus, as he speaks to Nicodemus about the new birth, John 3 and 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Faith comes as a result of the new birth and the ability, if we will, to come before Jesus. It's apparent that the Spirit of God spoke to this man and he was going to go to Jesus through whatever was necessary to get to Jesus. He was even willing to be stoned. This man became aware as that thief on the cross did, that he was a sinner in need of a Savior, and that Jesus is the Savior of his people. But he came also knowing that Jesus was also the master physician, and came in faith seeking healing. We notice his first three words again, if thou wilt. Matthew and Luke record the same. This man didn't come saying, if you can, like the man who's, uh, who came to Jesus did, as, he, as, his son, as he had a son who was, being, who was possessed by an unclean spirit. You know, Jesus had just come off of the Mount of Transfiguration, and this man in a village near uh, Caesarea Philippi came to him and said, if you canst, or if you can. But this man, this man came saying, if thou wilt. There's no, mind, no, no question in this man, in this leper's mind, that Jesus could. But would he? The question in the man's mind as he approached Jesus was, will he heal a leprous sinner like me, as unworthy and as unclean as I am. This leper knew that his condition physically and spiritually, and, in, and he, he, he knew his condition. And in this question, he acknowledges the sovereignty of the one he addressed as Lord. If thou wilt. He accepted by faith what Jesus could do if it was according to his will. And he placed his life, his desire, in Jesus' hands. That desire, if was thou canst make me clean. That this leper was wanting healing from his leprosy. So by faith he had put his miserable physical life in the hands of Jesus. Luke records that he was full of leprosy, and his nine lives were, or excuse me, his nine years were probably up, and he saw his own death coming soon. In the same manner, we by faith put our physical lives in the hands of Jesus with the knowledge that he, we already have his promise of eternal salvation. Our spiritually healing is eternally complete. 
But we need divine intervention and we need healing on the earth. We do not, we may not know what is in store for us today, tomorrow, next week, or next year, but we have a promise. James 4 and 10 records that promise. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. And this is what that man was wanting. He wanted to be lifted up. He wanted to be healed. Now let's look at Jesus' reaction, verses 41 and 42. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. When Jesus, or when this man approached Jesus, Jesus sees that he sees this poor man, he sees his condition, yet he doesn't shrink back in fear from the leper as the rest of the people were probably doing. He is not repulsed by the appearance of this man, nor the smell. And the scriptures tell us that Jesus was moved with compassion. Compassion. Well, this is a word which, it, which indicates a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is struck by misfortune. But compassion is accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate that suffering. In his eternal love for this man, Jesus was stirred into action. He, 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 he acted. Why? Because this miserable man was part of his family. As this leper knelt, knelt before Jesus, something happened which amazed the man and everyone else who were watching. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Honestly, I didn't go back and read all of the law concerning leprosy. But I kind of thought in the back of my mind that touching a leper was forbidden in the law because of the possible spread of the disease. But Jesus put forth his hand and he touched him. The man had not, was not healed yet. The man had not felt the touch of another's hand for years, not even his wife's or his children's. He's been isolated. Remember, leprosy even deadens the nerves of the body. I don't know that he felt that touch or not. But if there was any feeling left in his body, I, be I believe he did. And it was a touch like he had never felt before. It was the loving touch of the great physician wherein he was told, I love you and I'm going to help you. And this is what Jesus' touch does for his people today. His touch is one of love and compassion. It's a touch of comfort and healing and reassurance. It's a touch that we feel when we take our burdens to him and leave them at his feet. Now, Jesus' touch did not heal this man immediately. Let's look at the words of the Lord in verse 41. I will be thou clean. Again, I go back to the uh, leper's request. He says, If thou wilt, if thou wilt, his faith has told him that Jesus could. But the question that remained in his mind, will Jesus heal me? And in this instance, Jesus says, yes. He says, I will be thou clean. Does Jesus always say yes? No, he doesn't. Sometimes the answer is wait, be patient. And sometimes the answer is no. Even as the answer to Paul when he prayed three times from the thorn, about the thorn in his side. The answer 
No, my grace is sufficient for you. But here, here this man's health is instantly restored. The picture comes to me. The face becomes normal. The skin becomes is healed. The shattered hands and feet were restored. The ruined skin became smooth as what we call smooth as a baby's behind. The man was physically brand new for his age, whatever that may have been. He was a new creature first within. That was before Jesus spoke. And he was new without after. This former leper who had previously been made acceptable in the beloved was now able to be accepted among the people. But there was something else to be done. According to the law, chapter 44, excuse me, verse 44 of our text, Jesus' word saying, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. According to Leviticus, Leviticus, this, Leviticus 44, excuse me, Leviticus 14, this man was to go and show himself to the priest and fulfill the law's ritual requirements before he could re-enter the temple's congregation and population in general. In 1 Timothy 1 and 15, Paul writes, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And yes, saving sinners was the chief work of Jesus Christ while on the earth. The Old Testament prophecies tell us that the Messiah would also be a healing. And these healings were to be proof. And they were proofs of the de deity of the Messiah which was to come. The healing of this leper or any of the healing miracles by Jesus are pictures of the miraculous spiritual healing that we have received, having been cleansed, or rather we having been healed of our sins. One more point. Notice Christ's words in verse 44. But go thy way, show. Between the words way and show, there's a comma. And I believe that the word and could have been used instead of the comma in this part of the sentence. So let's look at that for just a moment. But go show thy way, excuse me, but go thy way and show to the former leper it was a command to obey the law concerning the cleansing of leprosy. But to go thy way and is to go in obedience to the words of Christ. For us, it's, a, it's that we're to go in the obedience of the words of Christ. To love him and to serve him and to love and serve our neighbors. This man had a testimony to give and he gave it. But in the wrong order. He should have obeyed first the Lord. Then do his witnessing. Did he ever obey that command? Did he ever go to the priest? We don't know. It's not recorded. We do know that by his disobedience, Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but had to work from desert places. This was caused by the leper's disobedience to the command of Christ. And as a result, Jesus was forced to move out of the city. Many who, who could have heard the word of the Lord never did because of this man's disobedience in this particular time. 1 Samuel 15 and 22 tells us, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Returning to the words of Paul, that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 
Beloved, we in our natural state, like this leper, were unclean. But by the healing brought by Jesus, we can now, like this healed leper, cry out, Clean! Clean! I am clean! Now, to tr for me to try and close, all of the Lord's born-again children have the ability to humble themselves as they come before the Lord, as this leper did. The question is, which may be a repetitive question, will we come before the Lord and humble ourselves? Will we lay our problems at His feet? Will we accept his answers and obey his word and go out rejoicing? Will we go to God? Will, as, and as we go to God and approach him, that high and, lifted up th the th high and lifted up throne, will we say, if thou wilt, and make our request? So I ask again, will we do this? Beloved, again, by His work, by Jesus' work, by His grace, we are cleansed of our sins. Our response should be to obey Him, follow Him, and give thanks to Him. Father, as we close this message, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've allowed me to prepare it. Lord, I just pray that it's been a blessing to those who might hear. Now go with us, Lord. God and direct us all as we gather in thy house later in the day. In Christ's name. And asking forgiveness of our sins. And amen.